All right, friends, so a new study came out showing that the ketogenic diet may enhance inflammation, may drive imbalances in blood sugar, which is pretty much the exact opposite that we find on social media, people that are doing the ketogenic diet. But let's kind of go through the, st the study and, and talk about what the researchers found. I think it's very important. I love reading from people that have opinions that are opposite of mine. I think we should be aware of this. So the, the title of this paper is called Glucose and Lipid Homeostasis and Inflammation in Humans Following an Isocaloric Ketogenic Diet. Again, the study is here. The lead author is Michael Rosenbaum. Second author is Kevin Hall. As you know, Kevin Hall and David Ludwig have, they're kind of on the opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to metabolic researchers and their ideas in terms of what makes people fat versus how People get fat in terms of the insulin carbohydrate hypothesis versus the calories in, calories out, energy imbalance hypothesis. There couldn't be more different. And so you need to understand that Kevin Hall is part of the study. That doesn't mean anything good or bad. We need to have a beginner's mind and really just look at what the study looked at. It was only a four week study, okay? Long story short, individuals, was, this was very controlled. I'll put links to the menus, which by the way, I had to find in supplementary materials to this study. And so those menus, the food was pre-made for the study subjects. All study subjects were men, no problem, but just keep that in mind. And so what these researchers looked at in week three and week four, which was after the two week kind of run in to the study, where you know energy, they had the baseline diet and so forth, they looked at things like C-reactive protein, they looked at adiponectin, they looked at GLP-1, they looked at this FGF-21, I believe this is a gastrointestinal and cretin hormone, they looked at glucagon. Now what's interesting though is a lot of the vegans, and I'm no problem with vegan, people can do whatever they want, whatever works for them, but doctors like Garth Davis was sharing on his Instagram just yesterday this study, and he was saying, see, the ketogenic diet increases inflammation and reduces insulin sensitivity. And that's what kind of inspired me to take a deep dive into the study. And I'll just put a screenshot here. You can see C-reactive protein and interleukin-6. What we're seeing here is some complex statistics where the scientists, what they did is they quantified the mean, what they called the diet effect, the change in diet and how that impacted IL-6 and C-reactive protein, two biomarkers of inflammation. And they say that the mean difference between groups was 0.45 and that was statistically significant. So let's just pause. Let's say your C-reactive protein increases from one to 1.45. No doctor worth their shirt is gonna give a flying crap about that. Let's, I mean, just to be totally honest with you, I'm not saying that that shouldn't be considered, but it's not a major swing in the sense that we should really be concerned about that. And also, again, this table clearly shows that they're really, on the ketogenic diet, C-reactive protein de decreased. Keep that in mind. But what you didn't hear about in kind of when the naysayers are saying, see, we told you ketogenic diet is bad, is the increase in adiponectin. There was a two-point increase in adiponectin. Why should we care about that? We know that adiponectin is an adipocytokine. It's a cytokine release from fat cells that helps improve insulin sensitivity adiponectin increased on the ketogenic diet. What also increased was glucagon. Glucagon is a hormone released from the pancreas that enhances ketogenesis. Ben Bickman has talked about this on this channel. I'll put links to those videos below. So there was a very small increase in the C-reactive protein, 0.45, again, four tenths of a point. Uh, but there was a dramatic increase in various gastrointestinal and incretin hormones that are involved in enhancing insulin sensitivity and so forth, which by the way, was, been, was increased in the ketogenic diet group. Here's what's unique though, and this is something that we've talked about and I, I am contemplating whether or not I want to write a letter to the editor of the journal Obesity to talk about this. So in the ketogenic diet test groups during week three and week four, the ketogenic dieters were given a test meal which was just kind of a high carbohydrate meal. And they had an aberrant response to that, meaning that their blood glucose and blood insulin levels was much higher than was noted when the baseline dieters had the same test meal. This has to do, friends, with this second meal effect. And it has to do with the fact that if you're eating a low carb, high fat style diet, and you, it, the body remembers and it starts to reprogram, okay? So this meal to meal, 
consistency is actually remembered metabolically in the body. And you might think I'm a total whack job, but there's a ton of research on the second meal effect. Scientists have actually looked at this. And so if you're low carb in keto and you have a high carb meal, your body might have an exaggerated metabolic response to that. And this has to do with this phenomenon known as this second meal effect. And that's where we're seeing some of the negative data uh, linked with the ketogenic diet. Because in this particular study, because again, the ketogenic dieters were having this low carb, high fat diet for several days, maybe even a week at a time. Then they were given this test meal challenge. They had an exaggerated response. Their insulin sensitivity to that test meal was not that great. And again, it kind of makes sense from what we know about with the second meal effect. So I want you guys to keep that in mind and that what was you know, kind of conveyed in the abstract was that the ketogenic diet reduces insulin, insulin sensitivity. It affects blood sugar regulation. But I need you to understand that that was during the high carbohydrate challenge meal. So keep that in mind. You know, If you're keto or you're trying to be keto and then you have a cheat meal or a challenge meal that's high carb, I mean, you're probably going to have an exaggerated response to that because your body is reprogramming itself and thinking that you're going to be low carb, high fat. So anyhow, if you have different interpretations of this study, links are below. The study is widely available to anyone. It's free. I would love to know. I, I could be misreading something totally wrong. I clearly see that the C-reactive protein on the ketogenic diet decreased, yet these authors are saying it increased. I don't know where they're getting their math, but if, but if you're a mathematician or a statistician, please let me know where I'm misreading this. Um, but again, I think it's good that we, we have these studies. You know, they're short term, only four weeks, you know, but it's, it's good that we, we're testing this diet. And it's good that we have differences of opinion because that helps us learn. I've learned so much from reading Kevin Hall's studies. I've learned so much from Lane Norton, you know, talking about calories in, calories out, you know. So it's good to just have an open mind and realize that we don't yet know all the answers. We don't fully understand human metabolism. That's why there's still nutritional research going on. So friends, you've made it all the way to the end. I'm, as always, super grateful that you're still here. That means you like the video and please hit that like button. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so because we launch one-off videos like this and also interview experts like Peter Atia, Ken Berry, Paul Saladino, and many others. So we'll catch you on a future episode down the road. See you guys.